Hello and welcome to my second lecture in thermochemistry, um, heat transfer problems, and then I'll follow up with a, a short lecture on enthalpy. And again, here are the knowledge outcomes prescribed by the province of Alberta. Um, I, I'm going to add these to every video so you, you can check your progress in terms of exam preparation. Heat transfer. As we said, we start the quantitative analysis in thermochemistry by examining the, the surroundings of a chemical system. And we refer to this kind of work as heat transfer problems. We know from past work that water has what's called a specific heat capacity of 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius. This means that it takes 4.19 joules of energy to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Various materials, of course, have very different heat capacities, and we'll be dealing with materials such as ice, aluminum, styrofoam, those sorts of things, glass. And we'll see in each case there's a different specific heat capacity for each. We use this value to determine energy change of the surroundings of a chemical system from observed changes in their temperature. And the general formula for this work is Q equals mc delta T where Q is the thermal energy absorbed or released by the surroundings in joules, M is the mass of those surroundings, C is the specific heat capacity for those surroundings, and delta T is the change in temperature for those surroundings. And you'll see there's a slightly different way of expressing the equation. Instead of delta T, we use a T final minus T initial. Questions in this area can vary. They can be straightforward or more complex. I'm going to start with a straightforward one. Here we have 50.0 grams of water at 20.5 degrees Celsius, and we heat it to 80.0 degrees Celsius over a candle. They want us to determine Q. And I'm going to show you an approach that I would like you to adopt simply because it's the most straightforward, but, it, but it's a thorough analysis at the same time. So we start with our equation, and in this case you'll see I'm using TF minus TI. And I'm doing that simply because the question gives us a TI and a TF. We substitute into the equation, there's our mass, there's our specific heat capacity, and there's our TF minus TI. And we come up with a raw value at 12,465.25 joules. If we analyze for significant digits, you'll see the question has three throughout. And we're dealing with a mixed problem, multiplying and, and subtracting. Um, we're therefore obligated to follow the multiplication rule, which requires us to use three sig digs. Our final answer is 1.25 times 10 to the 4 joules, therefore. In English, we would say the thermal energy of the water increases by 1.25 times 10 to the 4 joules. Here's a tougher example where the surrounding water doesn't go through an energy increase, but it loses energy. And we see that because the temperature drops from 100 degrees Celsius to 86.0 degrees Celsius. Same approach though, start with our equation, substitute into the equation, come up with a raw value, 2141.09 joules. And you'll see that we have a negative value, and this is consistent with the loss of energy of the surroundings. Applying sig digs, the obligation is to use 3, judging from the question. Therefore, Q is minus 2.14 times 10 to the 3 joules. In English, the water loses 2.14 times 10 to the 3 joules of energy as it cools. Here we have a slightly different example where the surroundings are made of ice rather than water. And that will give rise to a different specific heat capacity value as we'll see. What is the increase in kinetic energy of a 100 kilogram piece of ice with specific heat capacity of 2.00 joules per gram degree Celsius as it warms from minus 30 to minus 20? There's a further complication here. Our mass unit is in kilograms. It has to be in grams, so we'll have to show a conversion factor from kilograms to grams. Nevertheless, we start in the same manner. Here's our equation. We substitute into the equation, and you'll see here we start with the mass, 100 kilograms, but then we have a conversion factor. One kilogram is 1,000 grams, and that gets us out of kilograms and into grams. Multiplied by our specific heat capacity, multiplied by our change in temperature. Here's our raw value. Two million joules are required to increase this kinetic energy of this ice. Applying significant digits, it looks like we're obligated to use three. Therefore, our final answer is 2.00 times 10 to the 6 joules of energy. 
And in English, we would say the kinetic energy of the ice increases by 2.00 times 10 to the 6 joules. Here's a more complex example in that we have to rearrange the equation, and it appears we have to apply a couple of conversion factors. If 1,100 kilojoules of thermal energy is transferred into 5.00 kilograms of water at 20.5 degrees Celsius, what's the final temperature? Okay, so again, the energy is in kilojoules, and the mass is in kilograms. And both of these require conversion. Our energy unit has to be in joules, and at least the way we're approaching these problems, and our mass unit has to be in kilograms. So we'll start the same way. Here's our equation. And now we've got a further step. We have to rearrange the equation to isolate for the unknown, to isolate for what we're searching for. Now what we're searching for here is TF, the final temperature. The rearranged equation is going to look like this. Q over MC plus TI. Then we substitute into the equation, and it's kind of ugly, but it looks like this. Here's our Q, 1100 kilojoules. And you'll notice we have a conversion factor in the numerator. One kilojoules, a thousand joules. And again, that's to get us out of kilojoules and into joules. And then in our denominator, we've got mass, 5.00 kilograms, multiplied by a conversion factor there that gets us out of kilograms and into grams. And you'll see here, one kilogram is a thousand grams. And then multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the water, again, in the denominator, and then add Ti. We end up getting a uh, raw value of TF of 73.005966 degrees Celsius. Applying the rules of SIG digs, our final answer is going to be 73.0 degrees Celsius. The final temperature of the water, 73.0 degrees Celsius. So more difficult mathematics, but not too difficult, I would submit. Here's a similar question. However, I think we've gone away from water and we're dealing with methanol. The final temperature of 10.0 grams of methanol if 250.0 joules of energy are transferred into it, if the initial temperature is 20.0 degrees Celsius. And you'll see we're given the, the specific heat capacity of methanol at 2.918 joules per gram degree Celsius, so significantly lower than for water. Our approach, however, is the same. We write our equation, we rearrange, and we substitute into the equation. You'll see since the energy term, Q, is in joules, we don't need a conversion factor there. However, the mass unit for the methanol, no, there's no conversion factor top or bottom. The only, the only real tweak here is that we've got a different specific heat capacity, 2.918 joules per gram degree Celsius. We come up with a raw value at 28.567 dot 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 degree Celsius, and applying significant digits, we get... Uh, 28.6 degrees Celsius for our final temperature. The final temperature of the methanol is 28.6 degrees Celsius. Um, we're going to go on now and look at enthalpy change. And, and I want to pause here because this is the central piece of the unit. We've talked about how the surroundings gain or lose energy. The question becomes, where does that energy come from? If, if the surrounding water warms up, that energy must come from the chemical system. The chemical system must be losing that energy. And more important for the purposes of the mathematics, the, the amount of energy that the surrounding water gains must equal the amount of energy lost by the chemical systems. And uh, that, that's central to the unit. So we're going to focus on that energy change of the, of, the, of the chemical system arising from our calculation of the, uh, the energy change for the surroundings. And here we say it more technically. The thermal energy gain of the surrounding water is equal and opposite to the potential energy loss of the chemical system. And equally importantly, it comes from the system. This is an application of the conservation of energy principle, or law. To do this work, we introduce a couple of new systems, or a couple of new definitions, enthalpy and change in enthalpy. Enthalpy, represented by capital H, is the total of the potential energy and kinetic energy in a chemical system. Um, it has very little practical significance. It's impossible to determine all the vibrational and translational and rotational energies in a, uh, a chemical system, let alone its total nuclear and uh, chemical potential energy. Um, however, we can readily change it we can readily determine a change in enthalpy using thermochemistry. 
we can do so using this equation. The change in enthalpy of the chemical system has to be equal and opposite to the change in energy of its surroundings. That's where the surroundings get their energy is the chemical system. They're ha they're those, therefore, those two have to be the same, <clears throat> although opposite. One's gaining energy, one's losing energy. Uh, and to state it more technically then, the change in enthalpy of the chemical system is equal and opposite to the energy gain or loss of the surroundings. So we can look at uh, the same questions we did previously and add a little quantitative analysis to determine the change in enthalpy of the chemical system. So a 50, this is the very first question we took up. A 50.0 gram mass of water at 25 degrees Celsius is heated to 80.0 degrees Celsius over a candle. Determine delta H. The approach is the same. Q equals MC delta T. Substitute into the equation and come up with a raw value and then apply sig digs. Well, what do we know? We know that the change in enthalpy of the chemical system is equal and opposite to the change in energy of the surrounding water. Therefore, delta H is negative 1.25 times 10 to the 4 joules. In English, we would say that the enthalpy change for the candle is negative 1.25 times 10 to the 4 joules. The candle loses 1.25 times 10 to the 4 joules of energy heating that water. I got one final example. Yeah, this, this question is a little more complex because there's a couple of conversion factors. Calculate the enthalpy loss of a chemical system required to warm 1.25 liters of water from 20.0 degrees Celsius to 98.0 degrees Celsius. Okay. So the approach is the same. Q equals MC delta T. Q equals 1.25 liters. And you'll, uh, uh, you'll notice that's a volume measurement. And in fact, we need uh, a mass measurement in grams. So you get a conversion factor getting out of liters into milliliters and then using a density conversion uh, to get us out of milliliters into grams. So in fact, there's two conversion factors in a row here to get us out of liters of water and into grams of water. Multiplied by the specific heat capacity of water, multiplied by the change in temperature. And here's our value for Q. Here's our value for Q after applying significant digits rules. The energy gain of the water is 3.98 times 10 to the 5 joules of energy. Well, where does that water come from? It comes from the chemicals. And the amount of enthalpy lost by the chemicals is equal and opposite to the energy gain of the water. Delta H equals negative Q. Therefore, delta H equals negative 3.98 times 10 to the 5 joules. And the enthalpy change is that value. Negative 3.98 times 10 to the 5 joules. This means that the chemicals lose 3.98 times 10 to the 5 joules of energy warming this water. One final question. A student finds a burning candle raises the temperature of 200.0 mils of water from 21.0 to 29.0 degrees Celsius and determine the enthalpy released by the candle. Well, this should be coming uh, sort of old hat for you. Q goes MC delta T, substitute in. You'll see uh, we're given water in a volume in milliliters, so we need one conversion factor getting us on milliliters into grams. And then multiply by our specific heat capacity of water by our change in temperature, and we get a Q value at 6704 joules. Applying sig digs, uh, the question requires us to use three. 6.70 times 10 to 3 joules. That energy comes from the nth we lost the, uh, the candle, it's equal and opposite there too, so delta H equals negative Q, and the nth we changed the candle is negative 6.70 times 10 to the 3 joules. Um, and I have an asterisk here. You'll note that in this question and in a couple of other questions, in the English translation, we use the word loses. So the word loses implies the negative sign. So you'll see when I write the answer out in English, I don't use the word loses and the negative sign together. That would be redundant. So it's enough to say the candle loses 6.70 times 10 to the 3 joules of enthalpy when heating the water. So that concludes my lecture on both uh, heat transfer and, and enthalpy change uh, calculations. I'd refer you to any homework your teacher assigns. I'll see you next time when I talk about calorimetry and about molar enthalpy change. Thank you.